Welcome back, fam. We have another anime review up for the holidays. It is Halloween, and we got this special coming out for you. Now, don't be worried. We do have an anime on schedule to come out this Sunday, Caught Us the Prophecy. But I wanted to do something a little bit more in theme for the season and have one just specially for Halloween this year. So what I've done is I've watched the movie Lily Cats, and that's cat as in C-A-T, like with a little punctuations in between there. As we get down through the story, you'll understand why it's done that way. By the way, if you don't want spoilers, I will put a cut time in this description and you can actually just fast forward right to the end where I give my final review and you don't have to worry about any spoilers being there. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the movie a little bit. Now, the movie first came out in 1987. It was meant for the Japanese market, so it was sub. Eventually, it hit the US market and it was dubbed. Now, in regards to this movie, I did watch the dubbed version, and so didn't see the original, and I am gonna say, <laughs> without even watching the uh, original, you're probably gonna wanna stick with the subbed. This is one of those uh, movies that you will understand why once you see the dubbed, sometimes sub is better. On that note, let's talk about it. The film itself, art styling wise, I personally like the art. I like the, uh, the animation style. It is dated. I'm not going to lie. You will feel very dated watching this with the, how they draw out the characters, but it works for me. I like the atmosphere of how they uh, depict it on the space station, how they uh, chose the outfits for the ca uh, characters. It is straight up 80s. Everybody's wearing like three layers of clothes. You have a denim jacket for one guy. It's like every cliche clothes, and even though it's set in the future now music this is where i, I kind of feel iffy about the sound score for the music i will give it a plus because i enjoyed it it was like just listening to it by itself was actually entertaining but for the feel and the tone that they were trying to execute that's the part that i really didn't vibe with so it canceled each other out what i enjoyed about the music was it's entertaining music, but it did not go with the feel, uh, feel of the film. Now, on to the part that everybody wants to listen about. What did I watch? So, the quick synopsis of the film is that you have a crew and passenger. They're on a spaceship that are headed towards a new planet. It's an exploration adventure. Their job is to make sure the, uh, the planet is terraformed, that they can inhabit new life, and uh, investigate on it. But the journey is going to take about... 20 years to get there so everybody's gonna go into a deep sleep and then when they wake up boom it's been 20 years later their bodies may have aged maybe a year the best of everything right you know you get to sleep a long time and nothing really happens you wake up you feel refreshed yada 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 well lo and behold while they were asleep the ship was still operating of course but somehow in the computer program, it's, I don't know if it's designed to pick up materials while they're asleep for further studies, but a crane goes up, tries to grab something like a stray meteorite that was coming by, and it tr brings it on the board. And in the process, something gets damaged, and you could tell something gets into either the water supply or some kind of pipeline, right? They explain later on exactly how it gets in there, but that's uh, neither here or there. The main point is when they wake up. Everybody wakes up, everybody thinks everything's okay. You get introduced to your characters uh, earlier on when they were getting ready to go to sleep, but they, you know, give a little bit more uh, background story as the story progresses. And when that happens, of course, this is a horror movie we're all watching, and the first one to get it is not the cliche character. Oh no, oh no. It is our main man from the U.S. of A. Not even that, from my home state, Florida. He is toting his firearms, representing his company. He's like, I'm a company man. And they're like, why do you have a gun? It just makes me feel safer. Does not want to relinquish his gun. He goes to sleep with it even and next thing you know in a off screen panel boom he's out still has his gun with him though they had to take it from his cold dead hands and it was at that point uh they do a quick study on him and you find out real quick that it's like a bacteria that uh he was infected with that killed him off so everybody's concerned like what's this uh, bacteria or virus how did he die and he's just dead he's not like something gruesome or anything like that he's just dead then uh, the two guys that find him, they're over uh, on the cargo ship getting stuff ready because of course they have to do the explorations. They find those two guys dead. Now, our body count just went from 
none to three real quick. And I should remind everybody that this is not a long film. This is a 70 minute film, give or take. So it's a very quick movie. We're not even halfway through. Three people gone. Next, as uh, like the, the movie starts progressing, people are starting uh, inquiring. You see the doctor gets uh, next, right after these two guys. Now we're down to four. Then they find a doctor clinching his chest. So like everybody is just getting knocked out from the virus. While this is all happening, they actually get a feed from HQ. Mind you, this is like 20 years old. The feed says that there are two stowaways on the, the ship and they were gonna give out the images of the two stowaways and they need to find these people because they are very dangerous, they're criminals. The feed cuts out. So they suspect that the reason the feed cut out was because of the stowaways. And potentially the stowaways woke up, messed with the feed, and then um, they're probably the ones that messed with the ship while everyone was asleep. So potentially that's how this virus got on the ship because people were messing with things that they shouldn't mess with. Now, back to the death count because that's what we're all here for is the horror film. Next thing we know, oh, I, and I almost forgot. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a cat, hence Lily Cat. The cat's named Lily. The cat was brought in by none other, the daughter of the president of the company. And she wanted to bring her cat with. No one else is allowed animals, but she just wanted to, so they gave her uh, that privilege. Privilege is a, is a excellent word to use with her. Very shortly into this, after four people have already uh, got ghosted, you see poor Lily is victim number five, sucked in through a wall. The best description I have is like burst it open, kind of acidic like. So it was like a combination of being melted and burst it at the same time. That was, technically is probably the most violent scene in the entire movie. And of course it's with the cat. After Lily gets it, everybody is still investigating everybody and everybody is still paranoid as like who's the criminal and everything else. When in my mind, I will be, okay, there's bigger things to worry about than who's a criminal. I just saw a cat get sucked in through a hole. But, you know, everybody has a priority. And then, of course, there's always that one person that knows we're all dying. Let me go separate from the group. The one passenger that separates is a, a, a female. She goes uh, from Hong Kong. She's from the Hong Kong branch. She goes to investigate herself in the med bay. She scans herself. You don't see nothing inappropriate there. It's all good. Still clean. Still still okay. I would say, dare say maybe PG-13, borderline R for language. This is all true in any life situation. Always check underneath the bed. She steps down off the bed, gets snatched. <laughs> tendrils, fleshy things, and that's it. They they pan away from the camera real quick. They start looking for her because they realize the bodies of the crew that have died have all disappeared. And then, of course, Mr. President's daughter, she finds her. She finds the missing uh, passenger. And then in all of five seconds, not even dialogue, you see her face just split open. And there's Lily's face looking out at her. And then the body separates off into these like tendrils and like gets sucked up into the AC unit. Mrs. President's daughter is crying. Some of the crewmen are like, oh my God. And then some of them are like, wow, that really just happened. Cut to everybody having a small meeting. They're trying to rationalize the entire situation. Now, mind you, the entire time all this is going on, you have the Q&A that's going on between each characters to try to figure out who's, you know, impersonating who. There's been one guy the entire time who's been leading the forefront of the investigations not even the captain not the captain of the ship is just standing by let, watching everything go down it's a passenger that's been uh QA and everybody he's all up in everybody's business literally hacked their files knee deep into their business he calls one of the other passengers out for the fact that the guy figures out why that one girl was in the medical bay by herself to investigate herself to see if she was infected. And he's like, it's what I would do. And he's like, you're awfully smart for a guy who's like specializes in engineering. He's like, medical stuff, it's a hobby. He goes, you're the imposter. Your specialty is this. And he's like, well, it must be you're the imposter too because you've been really up all our uh, butts about this and now you figured me out. I really thought that was pretty thrown in and it felt loose. But you know what? I went with it. Not much time. You got to get stuff out there. Turns out the guy who was hacking the systems and investigating everybody, he was a detective. And the one guy who confessed to being another person that was not supposed to be there, he was wanted for murder for killing three dudes. Uh, you know, he, he confessed it right there. He's like, I gunned him down out in day, uh, daylight. Yeah, I did this. And the detective handcuffs him right there, which no one questioned that he had handcuffs on him in the first place. 
on a, on a private uh, expedition, but I guess Mr. Florida was able to get away with bringing in a shotgun. So, yeah. The captain just interrupts everybody and just goes, you guys are really doing all this and it doesn't matter. We're here. Whatever happened, happened 20 years ago. For you guys, it was like maybe a couple days ago, but that was 20 years ago. And by the time we get you back, it'd be another 20 years. And he's like, just for perspective, I'm the captain. I'm over 250 years old. My crewmate who's over there, she's over 150. Most of the people you know are going to be really elderly or past. The crime that you did doesn't really matter in retrospect of things. And I love the fact that they're touching on this to kind of bring back the homey moment of this. But everybody forgets that there's like bacteria that's infecting everybody that's turning them into like gooey monsters at this point. And as the story progresses, more people die. And I would say at the halfway point, we've already lost more than half of the crew. Two more people died, a hangar bay door opens. They get sucked out and exploded. Just over the halfway point now, two more members uh, of the crew die. You get like the, the nurse lady, she gets nicked. She doesn't really have much of a dialogue. You got the one guy, the one mouthy guy who's like the geeky nerd of the crew. You know he's gonna get it, he got it. And then it, it whittles down to the four, the last, the last four. The president's daughter who, I don't know, just privilege is what gets her through it. The criminal who killed three guys, the detective and the captain. The lone stand member of the crew who pretty much watched everything for the most part. And then we get another scene where confession time. The uh, the reason he killed three people was because of his sister. Back when he was in med school, his sister got hooked on drugs while he was away. He found her and he didn't recognize her anymore. And out of revenge, he found the people that got her uh, addicted to drugs and he killed the three people out of vengeance. Uh, and I think she had or died by that point too. So it was like moment of passion kind of thing. Uh, maybe not, but he still sought it out. Moving the story along, you come to realize that it wasn't either stowaways that hacked the ship in the first place to bring this thing on. It was an AI system that was developed by the company and actually put on to the ship without the captain's notice. And lo and behold, the AI is Lily, the cat. But you might be asking yourself, why? How? Didn't you say that Lily died earlier on? There's two Lilies. Two Lilies. One is adorable Lily who got a gruesome, horrible end. The other one is a android lily is a robot lily cat so it was there the entire time while everybody was asleep it was running the show no one knew it because it would just like disappear it would never be in the same proximity as the real cat and then the captain sees this pretty much sitting in the captain's chair operating the computer and he blow torches the cat and then the cat falls apart and you can see this mechanical skeleton and that's that's when he puts two and two together that the that the corporation no longer wanted humans to man the ship and they felt that they were out of date. But then when the corporation realized that the cat brought in a dangerous virus, it started implementing tactics on how to destroy the virus and it couldn't. And then it realized, okay, rather than having the bad PR, we'll kill off everybody and uh, we'll just pilot back the, the remains of the ship and blame it on the captain. So you see like bits and pieces of the ship start exploding as it starts trying to erode some things. and. <laughs> And the detective dies with the handcuffs still on. Never really has a last final speech or anything. He just dies uh, from the infection, of course. And that's when the uh, president's daughter confesses to the real reason why she's there. That she wanted to be on a journey because she knew it would be a 40-year journey to and back, round trip. And the reason she wanted to do that 40-year journey was because a friend of hers in school hooked up with a boyfriend, stole her boyfriend, and she wanted to flaunt how good she looks back at this other girl who would now be in her uh, like 60s or 70s. So at this point, when I realized this was the main reason you brought yourself onto a ship with your pet cat so that you can just come back into the future and be like, honey, look, good, uh, look at how good I am. And then flaunt yourself in front of your, uh, your would-be friend who stole your boyfriend. And of course, potentially, the boyfriend that might still be with her. There's no guarantee that the boyfriend will still be there. She didn't even mention the boyfriend. She's like, I just want to flaunt this to the other girl. I laughed openly. 
at that point. When I realized that, I'm like, okay, all right, there was no, there was no way to humanize this character for me. And the one point where I'm thinking, okay, this is no win situation. Even the main, uh, even one of the main characters, um, who you think is going to be the hero, whose name is Hero. He's the uh, the guy who killed uh, the three drug lords. Or three, he's the guy who killed the three people, the criminal. He grabs the shotgun and he's like, I'm just going to end it. And he's like, he's like, there's two other rounds in here. You guys can have it if you want, but I'm going to take myself out. It's not worth it. Now the captain steps up and the captain goes, no, you should live. You should live. He's, I think everybody's like, why? We're going to die. If the, if the virus doesn't kill us, the ship will kill us. If the ship doesn't kill us, we have nothing else. He's like, you have the planet under uh, below you. You can live on the planet. And, but how are we going to get there? And the captain's like, I got a plan. Good old captain holding on to everything until the very end. Turns out the old man captain has a space shuttle, like NASA style space shuttle. Just stowed away. He's like, it's a good luck charm. He's like, I've just had it for years. People thought me crazy. I would say he is crazy, but whatever. What works, works. And he let he lets them take the two shuttle. He goes and stays on the ship. He's like, I'm not letting this ship get taken back, uh, back to Earth, which actually is probably the most heroic and understandable thing to do because if it does affect the earth it's like the thing all over again he blows up the entire ship uh, there's no easier way to say it. he just does it like he finds a way he destroys the entire ship the virus was on top of the shuttle it wasn't in the shuttle uh and it burns up as they enter in the atmosphere and uh the two characters left is uh miss privilege and uh criminal doctor md and that's where the movie ends and that's it so to surmise, you're basically watching the thing crossbred with Alien as far as the movie goes. Execution, not there. I love the concept. The concept of those two uh, franchises being meshed together, great. I also love the idea of how corporate organizations were trying to change things in the background. I also like the idea of how corporations, if they mess up things that are working, trying to improve and streamline things and covering it up. It's like the corporate conspiracy thing uh, going on. So that was also an interesting concept running in the background that you don't really realize until the end. But, and the thing uh, that was on the forefronts where you have this intrigue of who's who, like of the passengers, someone is, or some uh, more than one person are imposters. Great ideas. But the executions of those were where it flawed. It is in those points that this movie is one of those rare movies I would say deserve to have more time dedicated to it. Again, I said this was a 70 minute long movie, so uh, it's a relatively short film. I think it would have done it more justice if they had uh, another 10, maybe 15 more minutes. Hindsight being 2020, that is. Considering this was a movie that came back in, out in uh, 87 and this is a 30 plus year old movie. It's going to get it. You know, I'm going to give it a pass for the story. If they did it today, I think it would be great. Now, as far as anime horror goes, it's honestly not that scary. It's one of those films that you watch and you go, this is going to be entertaining. This can be fun, but it doesn't really scare me. As many deaths as I described that's happened in the film. And if you watch it, as many as you will watch, the monster is gruesome looking, but the deaths aren't really that gruesome. For the most part, the most gruesome and grotesque thing is the monster. People that die on the screen, you really don't see die on the screen. Um, except for one character. One character does die on screen besides the cat. And even at that, his death wasn't really that bad. He just kills over and then explodes, really. The cat was the worst part, in all honesty. All in all, just to recap everything, as far as sound and music, music was entertaining, but it didn't help the film. The sound of the dub was not coherent. Some characters sounded higher, some characters sounded lower, just like it sounded like their audio was just not in sync. And that's not even including the dialogue itself. They cancel each other out, so they get no points there, nothing there. Animation, I enjoyed it, it was fun, reminding me of my OG animations that I used to watch all the time. Back in the day, you'll see similar art styles. So that's okay with me. The concept of the movie, I love the concept. The the undertones, the tie, uh, the the storyline that they were going for, all very great. The execution is flawed. This is definitely something where it could have been flushed out more. They may have been able to trim out something and then uh, have a better execution with it. So the end product can sync up with the storyline. 
that they wanted to go with. And I think it was, the concept was too much for what they were going for. Granted, trying to jam everything in 70 minutes is a hard thing to do. But I think that's where you need to sacrifice some things and they just sacrificed the wrong things. So as for that reasoning, I am gonna give it three out of five Nerd Talk. It's a fun film. It is a film that you could watch. And if you're a nostalgia freak, you'll love it because it does give that nostalgia vibes for those 1980s part, uh, anime films that we grew up with. But in today's uh, day and age, this is not gonna be a film that I can say like, I would show with a friend that would on anime. They may be one and done. And you gotta pick your friends who you're gonna show this to. Like some people are gonna be like, why are we watching this? They can't get past the dialogue. And others will be like, this is hilarious. I, this is like a stupid film I can enjoy. So it's gonna be down the road, in the middle. It's, you're gonna be okay watching it. On that note, thank you for joining me on my Halloween special review of Lily Cats. I found this movie watching online at Amazon Prime. You can also find it on Tubi or Crunchyroll and VRV. My suggestion, catch the subs, dedicate the time to reading it. You'll be happier for it. Otherwise, continue to watch anime, my friends. Expand your minds. Happy Halloween. Much love.